Welcome to our second lecture in trigonometry at Dallas College. I'm Professor Michael Bailey, and this is 1.2, Angle Relationships and Similar Triangles. We're going to be learning about geometric properties and triangles. Vertical angles have equal measures, and vertical angles are the angles that are created by the intersection of two lines and they are the angles that are opposite each other. Here in this diagram, you can see that there are two red angles um, on the left and the right, and then um, two blue angles on the top and the bottom that are created by these, this basically X-shaped intersection of two lines. And so the red angles are equal and the uh, blue angles. And so vertical angles are simply opposite angles created by the intersection of two lines, and they have the same measure. Um, parallel lines are lines that lie in the same plane and do not intersect. This is probably a review. And when we have a line that intersects both of these parallel lines, we call this a transversal. You can see this in the diagram in red, and it's the line Q is called a transversal. All of the angles created by the two parallel lines and the transversal are labeled here. And we're going to um, go through the relationship between different types of angles. Okay. We call interior angles. Interior angles are the ones that are inside or between the two parallel lines. Exterior angles are like angle one and two and angle seven and eight are outside of the parallel lines. Okay. So interior is between the two parallel lines, three, four, five, and six. Exterior is outside the parallel lines, one, two, seven, and eight. And so I think that'll help with some of the vocabulary coming up. So the first kind of relationship we have is alternate interior angles. So angles that are between the two parallel lines, as you can see here in the example, um, and on opposite sides, alternate sides of the transversal, have the same angle measure. So in this example, four and five are equal. The other two alternate interior angles are also equal that aren't labeled on here. Alternate exterior angles, these are angles that are on the outside of the parallel lines and opposite sides of the transversal are also equal. And you can see that here in terms of angle one and angle eight. They are alternate because they're on opposite sides of the transversal, the red line, and they're exterior because they are outside of the two parallel lines. Interior angles on the same side of a transversal are supplementary. Interior angles on the same side of the transversal, they, so the angles between the two parallel lines and on the same side of a transversal are supplementary, which means they add up to 180. Corresponding angles are the angles that relate to, um, that are corresponding to the relationship between the transversal and the parallel lines. So for example, you can see here angle six is above one of the parallel lines, as well as angle two is above the other parallel line. And they are both on the same side of the transversal. This is called corresponding angles, okay? We could also have the angles below each of the parallel lines on the same side and vice versa on the other side. Corresponding angles are equal. So we now have all of these measures and relationships between angles. Let's see if we can solve a problem. Here we're given a, an expression for two of the angles. Angle 1 equals 3x plus 2. Angle 4 equals 5x minus 40. So we have to figure out the relationship between all of these angles. We know that angle 1 is equal to angle 3. These are vertical angles. We also know that angle one is equal to angle four because they are alternate exterior angles. Okay, and then angle one and angle two are supplementary. So one, three, and four are actually all equal. Well, we're trying to find the measure 
we're not just trying to solve x, we're trying to find the measure, and we know that 1 and 4 are equal, so we can accept, set these two expressions equal to each other. So 3x plus 2, which is angle 1, equals angle 4, which is 5x minus 40. If we do the math here and solve for um, x, we get x equals 21. Now be careful here because a lot of times this is what we, you know, we were done a problem in algebra if we solve for x, but here we're trying to figure out the measure of all four angles, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Well, angle 1 is 3x plus 2, so let's plug in that value of x, and we get angle 1 equals 65 degrees. By plugging in 21, we get 3 times 21 plus 2. We know that angle 4 is the same measure, but we can check it by plugging in the 21 as well. Angle 2 is the supplement of the 65 angle, so it's 180 minus 65. Angle 2 is the supplement of angle 1 and we get 115 for that, and angle 3 is a vertical angle, so it's also a measure of 65 degrees. When we're talking about triangles, and we're talking about triangles in a two-dimensional plane, the sum of the measures of the angles of any triangle is 180 degrees, and you can see that here with this triangle that has three angles, A, B, and C, that we they must add up to 180. Now this is in a two-dimensional field, like a, a piece of paper, right, just um, length and width. If you think about a field that's spherical, like our planet Earth, typically airlines, planes fly in, in, in angles that could be thought of as a triangle, and then that changes the measure of the angles of any triangle. This is just a little interesting fact, not something you need for this class, but this is called non-Euclidean geometry. And so triangles that are superimposed, for example, on the face of an Earth, on the face of the Earth, or a sphere, they can have, um, the sum of their angles can be as small as zero, if the angles are um, concave, or they can be as high as um, 540 degrees um, if they're all convex. Just something interesting, and that is called, again, non-Euclidean geometry. Applying the sum of the angle sum of a triangle property. Here we're given a triangle that has two angles identified with measures 48 degrees and 61 degrees, and we're trying to find the measure of the third angle. So we just plug these three in together, 48 plus 61 plus x equals 180, and then we solve for x. And here we get x equals 71. So the third angle is of the triangle measure 71 degrees. Now let's look at some of the um, types of triangles. The first type of triangle we have is what's called an acute triangle. And this is where all the angles are acute. Now remember, an acute angle is less than 90 degrees. So all three angles are less than 90. We have a right triangle, and, and remember that a right triangle is denoted by a, a square in the corner with, that has an ex, a measure of exactly 90 degrees. So if we have one right angle, we can't have two right angles because that would add up to 180 and we wouldn't have a measure for the third angle. Um, so a right triangle has one right angle in it. And then an obtuse triangle has one obtuse angle. Again, we can't have, uh, uh, remember an obtuse angle is any angle that's greater than 90 degrees. And so um, if we, we can't have two angles that are greater than 90 because again, the, tr the triangle adds up, all the angles in the triangle add up to 180. So these are our three triangles, acute, right and obtuse. Now let's look at uh, types of triangles in relation to their sides. If all the sides are equal, they're the equal length, we have an equal lateral triangle. If two sides are equal length and the third is different, then we have what is called an isosceles triangle. If none of the sides are equal, then we have a scalene triangle. <laughs> One of the last things we're going to look at in this section is um, the conditions for similar triangles. So if we know the measures of one triangle and we know it 
um, it is similar to another triangle, then we can use that uh, to calculate measures of angles and sides. For triangle ABC to be similar to a different triangle, to another triangle DEF, the following conditions must hold. Corresponding angles must have the same measure. So for example, if ABC is 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, then DEF has to be the exact same, a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Once we've determined that the corresponding angles are equal, and the in order for a triangle to be similar, their sides must be in ratio to each other. That means if one triangle, uh, if they have the same angles, the corresponding angles, then their sides are a multiple of each other. So the corresponding side might be a multiple times two, could be a multiple times one half, and that means that each of the sides you would multiply by that same ratio or proportion. So let's look at a problem so this becomes a little bit more clear. Um, in the figure, triangles ABC and NMP are similar. Find the measures of angle B and C. This is the easiest way to do it, uh, or the easiest type of similar triangle properties. We know that these angles are similar, so we know that they have the same angular measure in corresponding angles. So we can see that A corresponds to N. We can see that they are in the same shape, and so we know that C corresponds to angle P, and B corresponds to angle M. So C measures the same as P, which is 104, and B, which corresponds to M, measures 31 degrees. <clears throat> if we're also told that this uh, the triangles are similar, and here we have angle C equals E, A equals D, and angle B equals F, then we know that the sides are in proportion to each other, the corresponding sides. We can see here that side AC, because they're in the same shape, you know, really oriented the same way, then AC, the length of AC, which is 16, is in the same proportion to ED, DE, that line, as AB will be to DF and CB will be to EF, okay? So the first thing we want to do is look at the proportion. <clears throat> so if we want to try to figure out, um, notice here we put DE over AC. These are the given angles, DE and AC, DE and AC. So we can plug in the values 8 over 16. This has to equal again, um, the corresponding ratio here, DF to AB, okay? So we have eight over 16, we know what AB is, 24, and now we can simply do the math here and solve for the length of DF. This is one way you can do it, and you can go through all of these, but if you notice here, 16 over, eight over 16, excuse me, eight over 16 is equal to one half. That means the ratio of each of these sides is of triangle DEF is one half of the length of the corresponding side in ABC, okay? So since AB is 24, DF will have to be half of that or 12. Since EF, I'm sorry, since BC is 32, EF will need to be half of that or 16 or you can always make the ratios. That's a, a good, solid, foundational way. So we can see again that um, DF is equal to 12, and here EF is equal to 16, that we already just talked about. So let's look at one more problem, and this is actually um, how measures were taken um, for really large objects um, throughout history was to measure the shadow. Um, you could measure the shadow of like, for example, if you wanted to know how tall a tree was, you could measure your shadow, knowing how tall you are, and then measure the your height and your shadow and know that the height of the tree with its shadow, which you could measure along the ground, would be in the same proportion to the height of the tree. Um, 
these are again ancient measures this was i think that was archimedes that founded that anyway let's look at this problem workers must measure the height of a building flagpole they find that at the instant when the shadow of the station is 18 meters long the shadow of the flagpole is 27. so when the sun's shining down the shadow of the building is 18 the shadow of the pole is 27. We know these are similar triangles because the angle of the sun is hitting both the building and the pole um, at the same angle. It's a right angle here, so since this, uh, the angle of the sun is, is going to be the same for both of these, then the third angle is going to be the same. So we want to find the height of the flagpole. It's a good thing to do when you're trying to make build these um, proportions I like to put them in words first so that I make sure that I always put, for example, um, and here we're looking at a, at a building and a pole. So I just like to build it in words. So I'm gonna put the pole on top and the building on the bottom. And it's a good idea, whatever value you're looking at, to put that in the numerator. This will just help make sure that I put the ratio in the right order, that I don't put, for example, 18 over 27 and then X over 10. That here I've put the building on top and then the second one I was putting the pole on top. So just putting in words, the proportion helps make sure I put the right measures in the numerator and the denominator. So the height of the flagpole is MN. The height of the building is 10. The uh, length of the shadow of the pole is 27. And the length of the shadow of the building is 18. And now we can simply do the math. Here we've reduced the fraction of 27 over 18 just to make it easier. You don't have to do that, but you know sometimes sim smaller fractions make things easier. We cross multiply 2mn equals 10 times 3. And so we get um, mn, which is the length of the flagpole equals 15, or the flagpole is 15 meters high. This ends our lecture for today on 1.2. Hopefully that was helpful, and if you need to, rewind and go back.